it's usually around episode three or four where things start really snowboarding in terms of anime previews for me each season. Not normally this fast though. I'm only about four days into a season and I'm already overloaded with about 17 or 18 shows I need to watch. And it's not that I've been slacking this time. I've been trying to watch the episodes as quick as possible. It's just the fact that all got landed at the same time. Nobody can watch this many episodes in this many days. Especially not anime this bad. But I've, looked, I've watched them anyway. I've recorded what I think of them and I'll let you know what I think as well. And you let me know in comments where I'm wrong and where I'm right. And join me because this is a 2023 winter anime preview from a different perspective. First up today we have Only My, I'm Now Your Sister. An anime where our main character wakes up one morning to find himself transformed into a lolly. Now this is a guy, clearly is a, an anime shut-in guy, who his anime is filled, room is just filled with nothing but posters, anime figures, things thrown everywhere. It's basically your generic anime main character's room. But now instead of being host to probably a fat, smelly old git. It's now host to a cute looking lolly of indeterminate age. And his, her sister enters a room and we've learned that, yeah, his younger sister, now his elder sister, has drugged him and transformed him into what he is now. And the entire first episode is about him learning about what he's become. I mean, the tone of the show is brought up very quickly by the fact one of the first things that Mihari, his sister, tells him is, okay, you're now a girl. One thing I'm sure to really tell you before you try and do anything, the clitoral orgasm is really, really powerful. So you might want to be careful. Telling what looks like a little girl that, that's definitely putting the tone of the show several tiers lower than you might expect. Although, having looked at the characters in this show, putting the level of this show exactly what I expected to be, because I took one look at the artwork to show it looked cute, but it also had danger alarms flying all over it. None of the characters in the show, not even the uh, mad scientist, now big sister character, looks like they should really be anywhere outside without adult supervision, let alone having bathing scenes and discovering one's own personal body as a trope. Don't get me wrong, Mahira goes through a lot, main character Mahira goes through a lot of the things any teenage guy would go through if he suddenly wakes up to find himself without a dick. But the whole voyeurism is back again from last episode as Mihari, the sister, the scientist girl, is basically poking fun at her sister. The whole voyeurism of finding out what makes a tick, um, spying on her with hidden cameras when she's changing, making sure she only wears the cutest dresses. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if there's a hidden camera in the bathroom, let alone a bedroom. And then at the end of it, Mahiro finding out that she got kind of turned on during a random boys love game that he bought when he was a guy, by accident. Yeah. The opening of the show also makes me a bit worried because there's a lot of other younger looking characters in this one as well. Is it just the art style? I mean, I think a lot of it is probably the art style because this has the same kind of aesthetic that things like Lucky Star has, where the characters, even when in high school, they look like they're 12. And that really does not do a show any favours. I'm probably not going to watch any more of this one. If it's a quiet season, I might watch an episode or two more to see is this as bad as that thing it is. But honestly, based on this first week of anime, this one's probably going to be one and done for me. If you are interested in watching this one, you can find it airing over at Crunchyroll. Next up today, we have the Ice Blade Sorcerer Shell War World, an anime we've seen a million times before. As our main character, Ray White, is entering up and entering into a new magic school, and yet he's the only normal there, I think they call him a an ordinary, basically a commoner, at a school full of rich kids. And as, as such, as, as the ordinary, He's going to be picked on and bullied, but for somehow he's going to have a superpower and he's going to be the strongest kid in class, getting all the girls to swoon over him. And the end of and basically he's going to have his own har little harem while the bullies try and bully him and they get going to get their comeuppance. 
And in the first five minutes of the episode, we get introduced to the main girl, Amelia Rose, who is class president, beautiful redhead, incoming student representative, everything that the redheaded main character, main female lead is going to have in a show like this, including her immediate draw to Ray. We don't know why Amelia's really immediately drawn to Ray. Maybe she can sense in him the magic power, which he clearly has because he's a main character. But she's pretty much your prim and proper perfect girl. Everybody loves her and she can't do no wrong. We've also got the quiet half-elf girl in class, Eliza, who is shy, but she gets a bit enthusiastic about certain subjects. She is worried about her race because she's a half-elf, she's always been bullied for it. But she falls head over heels for Ray because Ray can't compliment her. you got a bunch of other characters, you've got a long-haired beauty in the gardens, you've got a super crazy twin tail girl, you got a teacher, you got a bunch of other characters which are clearly going to be in it at some point. But going through this first episode, I felt that they were rushing it. Pretty much every single trope you see from shows like this happened in that first episode. We are introduced to character after character after character at an almost non-stop barrage of stereotypes and tropes and fetishes and things we've seen a million times already just presented better. This show is not great. Ray White is boring. There's nothing interesting about him, or in fact is the reincarnation or the inheritor of the Ice Blade Sorcerer title, which obviously gives him super magic powers to use a sword, as he shows at the end of the episode. One thing which did stand out to me, and this one that did make me chuckle a bit, him and his new roommate share a bond over their muscles. Because our main character, despite looking absolutely generic and boring, is apparently ripped as fuck as is his as roommate, and they bond over their muscles. That has no impact to the rest of the story, of in fact they're now friends because muscles. But apparently it makes some kind of sense. Honestly, this show... Don't bother, just skip it. I'm, I'm tempted to say I may watch one or two more episodes just as a truly awful, terrible show. I don't want to see how badly it burns. But that's the only thing you should really be watching this show for, it's, it's trash. If you do want to watch it, find it on Crunchyroll. And speaking of shows we've seen before, welcome to Farming Life in Another World, an Izakai show where a main character dies for some reason, a dies a young death, I think of an illness I think they mention, is given because of that, God apologised to him, says you can have anything you want in your next life, he says, I want a hoe. But God obviously misunderstands him because... He was clearly talking he wants uh, bitches and hoes. Instead, he gets farming skills. Of course, I'm joking about it. He, he actually just wants to go farming because he saw, he saw a cool TV special about farming when he was in the hospital. He thought, yeah, I could do that. And so he becomes a farmer. In fact, he gets dropped in the middle of a forest and nested Minecraft his way out for uh, a while as he befriends local dogs, digs himself a, a shitter, uh, helps the dogs give birth, makes himself a farm, Causes mass deforestation within his local vicinity, creates a moat, kills some rabbits, and grows some tomatoes. There's not really much more to say other than that we know exactly what's going to happen because rather than lead a mystery in as to what's going on, the anime starts off by showing us exactly where we end up a village full of our main character and just female characters of every race and creed, and him being super happy with his life as his two demon maids are for some reason just cooking for him as female characters flock around him talking about his farm. Again, this is a show we've seen before. It's not so much an overpowered isekai when it is just a isekai I want to make a farm. It's farming sim, the anime. A main character, Humaku, has no real personality other than you've got to build a farm. Effectively, I'm not going to call him Humaku, I'm going to call him Steve. Maybe Alex. Steve decides, night one, he doesn't, start, doesn't get himself any food, he chops down a couple of trees, and then he buries in for the night. Second day, he goes out gathering more wood, makes himself a fire, gets a bit of food, 
yeah, it's basically how to survive and thrive in Minecraft, just not written and, and acted by Paul Source Jr. Bonus points if you get that reference. Farming Life in Another World is an anime which is not terrible. It's not the worst show I've watched in this preview guide so far today. I mean, the last two shows I've watched before this one were absolutely woeful. So it'd have to be doing really bad to be worse than those two. But again, it's not doing anything new. It's not treading new ground, which is ironic for a farming anime. If you are interested in watching this one, you can find it airing over at High Dive. Finally today, we have Sugar Apple Fairy Tale. An anime about a girl who wants to become a silver sugar master. A specialisation craft where you create super sweet sugar from apples. However, it can only really be taught by fairies. And so she leaves her hometown after her mother died, of course, and goes on a journey to become a sugar master. Now, there are fairies in this world, as you probably got from my early comments. And in order to safely traverse the wilderness, she needs a warrior fairy. But this anime where fairies are treated as slaves. Fairies are born from nature, and their lives, their hearts, are held in their wings. And of course, unscrupulous humans discovered that by ripping off a wing of one of the fairies, they will still stay alive since they've got both wings still in existence, but they can actually hurt and damage a fairy by damaging the wing. And if a wing is destroyed, the fairy dies. So a human will rip off a wing, a single wing of a fairy, and use it to control them, to create them, to basically create a form of bondage with fairies, where the humans put them into servitude and force them to do their bidding. And our main character goes on a journey to, as I mentioned, and she ends up saving this one little kid fairy from Miss Slaver, who is effectively about to kill him. The fairy is not exactly that um, enthusiastic about banking her because she's just another human and does not trust humans one bit. But Anne is pleased and happy she stayed with the little fairy as well. She wants to get himself, she, wants, she wants to get herself a warrior fairy to help her with a very dangerous dirt journey she's got to do. And she finds the perfect one, even though it's not exactly that perfect to her. The main male character of the show is Shal Fen Shal, a black-haired, absolutely beautiful male fairy who treats her like dirt. I mean, she, he calls her Scarecrow for crying out loud. But she eventually pays a lot of money for his services and he becomes her slave because she now has control of his wing. Of course, she doesn't want to just give her wing back because they just bug her off. She still needs to make use of him. And so they go on a journey knowing that any, at any moment, Shao may turn to her and steal the wing, so she's got to keep that protected. Even when sleeping, when he might jump on her and look like he's doing something else to her. But it's going to be a story about Anne learning from Shao, and Shao probably learning to love Anne. Since there's a, a, there's a bond, there's a connection between the two of them, which seems more than just master and servant. Although Anne has already said that once the journey is over, she will actually return Shao's wing to him, so he can live on his own life. I mean, Shao doesn't believe that one bit because he knows humans. Confident and is, and is sincere about her words, and I think Shao will probably learn that she is honest and upright, and she just generally likes fairies. Will we even bond? Probably. Um, but this is a show which is about that connection. Now, I did quite enjoy this one, even though it was a bit slow. It was a bit blatant as well at places. But it's a show which I will probably stick to a few more times. It's not the best show I've watched this season, but compared to the last eight episodes of anime I've reviewed, including this one, it's by far the best one of the last eight. Yeah, I've got to watch these anime in quick succession, and this one is sweet, sweet relief. Which is ironic, really, given the fact it's Joker Apple Fairy Tale. And you can find this one airing over at Crunchyroll. That was Only My, I'm Now Your Sister, The Ice Blade Sorcerer Shall Rule the World, Farming Life in Another World, and Sugar Apple Fairy Tale. Another four shows of average and low quality, which have started airing over the last few days. Let me know in the comments what you think I should watch more of, and join me next time for more. Until then, bye bye.